got to change. Absolutely. Something has to change. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move on. We're going to move on to the longest running segment on Washington Football Weekly. Like it, love it, or hate it. it. Yeah, buddy. As long as he said it, we still with it. Let's go. I can <laughs> dig it. I can dig it. And look, Ab, I, 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 while I got your voice, I'm, I'm going to get you to come with me and say this right here. Like it, love it, hate it. Tyler, Taylor Heineke's play, man. Hate it. <clears throat> I hate it. Um, he's too inconsistent for me. I I know everyone's all about how he throws the ball down the field. How he's um, how he makes these plays, and but no one talks about the plays he doesn't make. The simple plays he doesn't make. The uh, like that. That bothers me, man. It really, really bothers me. If you if you can't make the simple throws, how are you gonna? How can we feel confident in you making the difficult throws? Mm -hmm. And he was more reluctant to play in the Kansas City game. Like, uh, it's I think Ron was talking about how he felt uh, he played reluctant during uh, with uh, playing in Kansas City, but. He's too inconsistent for me, and that's – that. like, honestly, he makes good plays. I can't doubt that and everything like that. But to be a starting quarterback in this league, you got to be consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want the big contract, you got to be consistent. He's not consistent to me. And to me, that's why I say I hate this. I hate his play. And honestly, um, I'm – uh, I'm looking forward to next year <laughs> when we <laughs> looking for a new quarterback. Hey, yeah, needing somebody legit. Um, uh, Will, what you got, man? Yeah, I mean, to, <laughs> to put one one positive on this this subject, we needed to find out what we had. Mm -hmm. You know, he had that that exciting game against the Bucks. People were wondering. He's gotten a chance to get out there for a while. And we've got a chance to see that he's not he's not going to be your long term solution. Um, I was I noticed that uh, I saw a stat this week where against the Chiefs he had eight the all eight passes I think that he had no eight of his ten passes beyond ten yards were incomplete. Hmm. You know he's chucking them down there as opposed to really being accurate with them. That's that's he doesn't have the arm strength to do that. Um, I felt he forced the ball in the Saints game into at Terry too often when Terry was covered by by Lattimore pretty well. And he's still just trying to, you know, we, we've talked before that you got to feed the man, you got to feed the guy. Well, in that game, you didn't want to feed him. And we got lucky that a couple of the tip passes didn't get picked off by him trying to force it. So, yeah, I mean, it comes back to what we talked about in the uh, in preseason in training camp and. A lot of the reports, they said, hey, you know, this this job was was Fitz's. Heineke came in at, at the start of camp looking good. But then he kind of started to wave towards the end of training camp and preseason. Um, he was wavering because he stands in the pocket. He's not that accurate. He doesn't have the strongest arm to make some of these plays. And I think we've had a chance to really give him a chance to play. I think he's wonderful to have on your team as a backup. He is great in this situation where, hey, if you only need him for three, four games, he can keep you afloat. But we and, and so the dude deserves more than the two million a year he's making. He deserves, you know, to stay in the league for the next four or five years as your backup quarterback. Bless you. Thank you. Bless let him be your backup quarterback and let's figure yeah. out what who our next who our, our franchise is. Yeah. Yeah. I I, kind of, I mean I kind of agree with both of you. Like I I Ab, I wanna wait to I wanna look, push it back to next year. Like let's hit let's get Put our money and put all our resources in getting somebody that is absolutely legit that can and we can depend on and get out of this whole stupid conversation that we're in every year about worrying about our dag on quarterback, you know. Um, and but at the same time, Will, I, you're right. We I, we need to see what we have, and we did have. Him. I'm gonna say I like this, and the only reason I'm gonna say I like this is because of that point. We needed to see what we have. He is a backup. He's not a starter. You know what I mean? Anybody that, you know, any of those crazy fans that were out here saying, you know, pay this man because he's the future, blah, blah, blah. No, you're wrong. He's a backup. He's playing like that. 
He has some good he has some, some good moments, but I think he's best coming in as a reliever. He's a shot in the arm. Let's go. Here it is, you know. But as far as being the starter, he, he, he he's, he's not ready. He's not ready. And he and he's not doing awful, but the it's it's the little things, Ab, that you that you're talking about. There's certain things that you you need to get this. We talked about a play um, a couple weeks ago where he he had like four verts going and he tried to stick it in there between the safety and the corner and he tried to drop it in and almost got it picked off. When you have McKissick, who's five yards in front of you, wide open, and he would have had at least a first down, if not 10 to 15 more. You know what I mean? Heineke just uh, take what the defense give you, and he he wants the big money ball. But at the same time, now it's kind of be like he's he's being reverted down to a uh, uh, um, um, what, did, what did coach call him a game manager? You know what I mean? Dink and dunking. That's what, that's what he's doing now. He's not so. Hey, I'm glad I'm glad we know we have a backup, somebody to go. But I'm I'm waiting for the let's get the starter back. Let's get or let's get somebody that we can rely on because this ain't this ain't happening. I really like what Nathan Nathan put in the comments about how they, they need to be drawing up some plays for him. Yeah. He didn't have a single rush against Kansas City. Huh. That's not catering to what he can do because he does have the elusiveness. They do need to be featuring that. And I think you're going to grow some of this game confidence when out there if you're catering some of the plays to that. you know. And he, he really did try and become this pocket passer on Sunday. And I said, dude, that's not you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. He said, do you think he's trying too hard? He admitted it. He no. admitted it today. He said no. he tried to be perfect on Sunday, and it didn't work. Right. I think <clears throat> I think Ron Rivera is, like, trying to uh, fix this, fix that, like, here and there, here and there, uh, uh, what, he, what his game is, and is taking his confidence away. I I honestly think that he's just like, and and it shouldn't, you know. what I'm saying like he still expects him expects him to produce, but by correcting and micromanaging everything that this boy does, you're going like especially someone that's not um, how do I say it that hasn't played a lot, like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like that's going to take away from his confidence, and it's and that's just not. That's not how you do it. And basically what you just said is that um, Ron, uh, I totally forgot what I was saying. <laughs> right. yeah, that medicine head will do that to you. Right, oh, right. My gosh. Oh, the my gosh. Right. Oh, yeah. man. No, but my man is – I wanted to go back to what I was thinking earlier. Mm. The boy's limited. And, mm. like, let's just keep it. Like, I agree with what you were saying, Will. I just think this man is very, very limited, and that is not what a starting quarterback is in this league. It, you can't be limited, not at right. all. You got to be able to. You got to be able to do everything nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Or else you're not going to. You, you're not going to be that top ten quarterback. You need to be able to run. You need to be able to pass. You need to be able to throw the long ball. And if you can't do any, like all of those. Nah, man, and yeah. I, and there's nothing wrong with being a game manager. By the way, I think if like Alex Smith was a game manager, but we won, you know what I'm saying? Like that's I love Alex Smith in his game management. So what? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what? I did. All we, off season, you complained about him <laughs> and said you want better. What? Why would we keep him and he's broken? <laughs> you just said you love that he won. He won with a broken leg. He, no, no, no. I meant prior to broken leg. That's oh, that. Okay. I'm talking prior broken leg. Oh, okay. Let me okay. just say right, that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let me just say that. Okay. City, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Not, 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 that's a big clarification. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. I thought we were all on the same. Uh, <laughs> We were thinking no, the same I'm, thing, I'm man. My bad. Three yard pass, Alex from last year. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I meant five yard, five yard, Alex. Dang. Right, right. Oh, right. The arm out. That's a great win. He was really throwing it downfield. Right? <laughs> I love it. 
love it. Oh man, yo, hey, uh, got got to move on. Definitely got to move on. Hey, uh, Nathan said Alex Smith, KC, and Washington before injury. I want him on my team. He was a solid quarterback. And you remember the year that we were uh, before the year he got hurt, we were what six and two going into that that week that he got hurt. You know, you know, Anthony Handy's with us saying, "What's up, fellas? What's going on, Anthony?" Yo, so we have got to move on. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go here first because it leads into the second one. Um, recently, while since we've been gone, there was a uh, – <laughs> we've seen there's a lot of news that has come out. One of the major stories that came out, Coach Gruden, the brother of our old coach, resigned amid – a uh, couple emails that surfaced, a number of emails that surfaced uh, that had some uh, misogynistic, some racist, and some homophobic slurs and, and, and uh, rhetoric in them. And, uh, you know, he resigned and, and did what he needed to do amid all that chaos and, and turmoil. But the interesting part about that is that the emails, a lot of them were to us. And back and forth to us, Will, I'm going to come to you first. Like it, love it, or hate it, this whole situation. Uh, it's a mix between love and hate. I love the fact that we're, we're back in the news for the wrong reasons, that they're bringing up Bruce Allen. They're bringing mm-hmm. up Dan Snyder. Mm-hmm. They're, they're bringing up all this stuff that the NFL tried to hush. You know, and, you know, the fact that we had a whole report that the – the, the Washington franchise paid this lawyer millions of dollars to investigate, and then nobody got to hear what they found out. Mm-hmm. So the fact that this is coming to light, I love this, okay? The fact that it's happening to us on a down year, I absolutely hate it because I've got us all excited. We're thinking about the second half. Listen, the NFL does not want the bad publicity and to have a team with bad publicity doing well and making the playoffs. So it kind of kills our season right here to say, yeah, yeah, we're going to be a top five pick because of, because if we're if we're bringing up and all this, the NFL is going to say, no, you're not going to have a good year. This is not going to, going to happen, and we're going to suck for most of the year. What is very interesting about this, why is the NFL so willing to let this information get out about John Gruden? Mm-hmm but not get out about anything else. All right. Who is in these emails? Tell me what other owners were going back and forth with this. Tell me what other league executives that work um, in New York at the NFL offices at their headquarters were involved in this. And, and who are they trying to protect? Because they are trying to keep this under wraps as, as best as they can. Because there are some implications in here that they do not want out. Yep. Yeah. Ab, what you think, man? <clears throat> um, I'm with Will. Um, I kind of love it and uh, hate it at the same time. I hate that we're involved. I love it that we're weeding out racist coaches. Um, um, misogynistic and and just not not just uh racist but misogynistic and just basically all out hateful do um right. but um let me just say this is just that gruden is old school let, let's just put that out there yep. and um i'm not justifying none of this but a lot of old school white coaches are like that are like that like they just yeah. they just are dumb like Gruden is <laughs> like oh thinking that your emails aren't going aren't can't be seen by anybody or anything like that. I, that's just some dumb shit. But if we're being honest, I I guarantee you, there's probably three fourths of the league, three fourths of the white coaches out there that think think the same way Gruden does. Hmm. Um. I'll even put it down. The reason why the NFL doesn't want these emails out is because you probably got Roger Goodell saying uh, saying some shit to the uh, mm. Washington uh, football team. Uh, you could probably got them talking about Colin Kaepernick saying they better not pick up a quarterback. 
Uh, pick, pick up that quarterback. Um, I mean, I, I, this – they don't want all the legal ramifications that can happen from just – just displaying all of this, uh, all of our emails will probably bring it down the whole league. And they can't do that. Yes. They they absolutely can't do that. Right. Um, this was just a smoke screen to yeah. – uh, um, so Dan Schneider, um, base, uh, this just plays into probably our next topic – into uh, Dan Schneider all of a sudden throwing down, saying it's uh, Sean Taylor day. All right. So right. Um, he was like, bad publicity, bad publicity. And then he said, what's our get out of jail free card? I know. Right. It always is. It yeah. is. The, I'm a retired uh, Sean, Taylor's jer- uh, Sean Taylor's jersey number. But we didn't let the fans know. Uh, right. At all. <laughs> Come the on game now. is in three day three three days. Like that was the worst thing, and I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate this team for that so much, bro. I do. I do. I do. I do. But yeah, like I said, it's just I. I think this. This is. I hate that we're involved, but I love that we're weeding out another bad coach that the the game has passed them by. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I again, I agree. I, 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 I hate again like that that we're involved. Yeah, that that to me is, is awful. Um, and then and and also to your point about um, you know, the whole thing about Dan Snyder and what we're about to talk about about this past weekend and the, and the Sean Taylor thing. Look, this this is like Will said, this is his mo. This is what he does. When all the stuff originally came out, what did he do? He got what Jason Wright. And he started hiring all these uh, African American uh, coaches and these female coaches. You know what I mean? He's the, he gets rid of the da- of the cheerleaders for a dance team and all that. Okay, nobody, oh, not no. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is what he does, and somehow he's allowed to get away with it. But I I, I think you hit the nail on the head, Ab. There is something that. Goodell and the rest of these owners don't want coming out. And Gruden was just the scapegoat. He was the guy that he was, they were like, look, either we all go down or you're going to have to go. And that's why he said, all right, I'm resigning. I'm good. I'm out. It. I, I hate this uh, because it just puts another black mark on our name. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, good. Let's keep showing. I mean, let's keep showing these things so that it's like, get, there's going to get to a point. I, we always thought we were there, but it's going to get to a point where we're like, all right, there's no way we can keep this man in the league, in the NFL. He cannot be a part of this stuff, being Snyder and all the crap he's doing. You know what I mean? And and hopefully this is one of the things that pushes it towards that direction. Because this and, and this next move that he did was just outrageous. So do you have anything else on this one? Because I'm about to move on to this next one real quick. And and to, before I do that, gotta bring in a friend of ours, a friend of the show, and, and a fellow alum of Herndon High School. My guy, Dave Ballinger, is gonna come in the show and talk to us about uh this this entire situation, this whole thing. Dave, what's up, man? Yep, oh, up, oh, and he's back out. <coughs> I think we'll get him back in here in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And, and, uh, hey, Ab, like you alluded to, man, hey, the Sean Taylor, uh, the retiring of the number. And then on top of that, you got Pat Mahomes dancing on the, like this, this whole, the whole setup, the whole thing was off, man. Talk to us. Um, so I, is this still like it, love or hate it? Yeah. Um, I, no, I hate this um, ceremony. Um, just like I said um, a few minutes ago, it's um, this is just bad. It, it's yeah. just really bad for them to plan this um, last minute. Um, that was, uh, I think, in in all, very disrespectful. Yeah. Like I think they didn't even notify the family until a few days prior than everybody else 
Like, you know what I'm saying? I just, I think it's just very, very disrespectful. Yeah. I'm more mad about them telling us uh, the ceremony on Thursday than I am mad about the um, email Jackson Mahomes dancing on the, uh, on oh, the yeah. 21. I, I'm yeah. more mad about that. Like this guy doesn't know any better. You know what I'm saying? And like, um, apparently, uh, I, uh, not saying he's a kid because he looks like a grown man, but mm -hmm. I mean, like he don't like he probably was very little when um, Sean Taylor was uh, died. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't know the significance to this. I give I give a uh, young man a pass. Okay. Now, Dan Snyder, Washington uh, football team staff, um, Jason Wright, uh, Ron Rivera, like all those guys. They know what Sean Taylor means to this team. And the fact that you wait three days prior to announce that you all the other retirements get months, months ahead. Mm -hmm. And you had years to do this. But you wait three days prior to a game to say, hey, we're going to do this. Everybody come show the fuck out, show the hell out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, like, really, bro? And I mean, it's just, it was just very disrespectful. I hated it. And honestly, uh, I, honest, bro, uh, don't see me, Dan Snyder, for real. Right. Or, or any of that upper management. Dave, welcome to the show. Got the camera issues correct. How you doing today, buddy? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. How are y'all? Doing, well. doing well. Doing well. Well, as well as we can be doing all things considering in Washington. Got to shout out my guy because I talked to him at our 20 year in, uh, at 20 year reunion and, and we started talking about this and he was like, Sean, I would like to speak on it. I said, I, come on the show, come on the show. So we have this segment, Dave's called Like It, Love It or Hate It. You've heard about what we've been talking about. They retired Sean Taylor's number and they gave us like three days notice and then you got all this other stuff happening. How do you feel about this, man? I mean, first off, I just missed the days where all we had to complain about with this team was how bad we were playing on the field. Yeah. Now <laughs> we got so many other things, distractions to complain about. Um, you know, the the office issues happening with Washington. Um, the rollout of his jersey retirement was disgusting and, and disrespectful um, mm -hmm. to him, to his family, to the fans. Uh, think about how many fans would have wanted to be at that game. You know, we right. needed more than three days' notice to really think about it because there's so many fans like myself, I'm guilty that are just like, I'm not going to another game until, you know, Snyder sells or until we start really winning like mm -hmm. one or the other. But if, if I had known that they were going to be retiring, you know, Taylor's number, maybe a month in advance, two months in advance, I probably would have gotten some tickets to go. Um, right. But the actual rollout was horrible. We all know how it was, you know, they, they renamed the highway leading into the stadium. And they had a picture of his family out there at the sign designation and behind them a row of porta potties. Like he couldn't have put up a curtain or something to block it, you know? You didn't even think about that. Man. Then you think about Dan Snyder himself when he showed up. He wasn't, you know, dressed nice for the occasion, respectfully for the occasion in a suit. He was in a hoodie and wrinkled, unpressed khakis and oh, wow. sneakers, just, you know, talking to the family. And we're not going to expect him to make a speech. He's going to get booed out by us, right? But I mean, it's just. It's another, like you said, Sean, earlier, it's another black mark for the team where it's like we can't get anything right. Not even not even something that, that we should have done respectfully maybe six years ago. Retired, you know, Sean's number. I was surprised that it hadn't already been retired. I thought that that was something that we did a long time ago. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, that was that was the biggest shocker to me that it had not been done before that. But, hey, piggybacking on what both of you guys said, it's just this is just terrible, terrible timing. You didn't even tell that, you know, until three days before. And and if I'm not mistaken, I heard that his family didn't even really know until, like, really close up to the game. Man, this is ridiculous. Why do this to cover up your own crap? Like, and, and to your point, Dave, you're right. If we had known this maybe at the beginning of the season, that's a, t that's a game you circle to say, hey, I will spend the money to do that. I will pay my respects because you know every true diehard Washington fan you know, and I, I know this is not his. This is his number, but it's not his jersey. But that two one, every diehard Washington fan has that twenty one, that reverence for Sean Taylor for what he meant for the team. Um, so to do this was just 
was just ridiculous. Will, what, what do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, you guys have uh, captured it really well. You know, the, the, it was true that the family was scheduled to come up because the road dedication was supposed to be a thing. The community project they do was supposed to be a thing. But then to also say, hey, wait a minute. We're, we're in the news for bad reasons. Let's retire his jersey. Let's do it right now. Like, it's just, it's so disrespectful for what, for, for the family, what they are, what he, what he means to everything. It's disappointing. Um, we were talking earlier about the, the Patrick Mahomes' brother. Here's my thing. This is on the team. It's not on, I mean, the kid's, in my opinion, an idiot for doing whatever dance he had, but blame the team on this. I worked, I interned one summer for a, a minor league baseball team. The amount of times I had to stand in front of things for no reason at all, just so kids didn't walk into this spot right here. You mean to tell me that that Washington doesn't have interns all over the place to say, your job is to stand on either side of this and don't let anyone in because they drew a 21 at the 21 yard line on both ends of the, of the sidelines. You can't have staff there to prevent that. You know, you put it right where, where some of those sideline passes are supposed to be. Have someone right there say, hey, 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 please, please step out of this. You know, right. we're, we're, we're doing something here. And we wouldn't have had this problem. So, again, it comes back to it's the fan experience that you had, Sean, in your game against the Saints. It's this. It's like it's just the same old bull that, that yeah. keeps happening. And it's it's just the same old Snyder. And it's, it's to the point where it's like we thought stuff was going to change with Ron. We thought things were going to change with Jason Wright. And it's still Snyder coming in and, and, and doing what he does. And, Dave, you said it perfectly. What's he doing wearing a hoodie all the time? You're the owner of a franchise. I'm not saying you have to dress the nines all the time, but you had a special ceremony. And and you couldn't even, like, maybe put on a collar shirt, you know, at least. Although I will say one thing. I'm going to put something, play a little bit of devil's advocate. I don't have that big a deal with jersey retirement. I like the idea of like unofficially like, hey, this is important. So Dallas has, since he's retired, two wide receivers have worn number 88 hmm. after Michael Irvin. Mm-hmm. They both were pretty hyped. They both have turned out pretty well. But if Dallas hasn't retired Michael Irvin, and I would say this, Michael Irvin had a better career than Sean Taylor did. Hmm. He had more of an impact on, on the game, obviously, a lot less years. Right. Part of me, there's been a lot of criticism of, of retiring the jersey and stuff. I'm kind of like, I, I don't know. Like, people know who 21 is. I'm not saying people, someone needs to actually wear it. But I, I just saw that. I started thinking about that. Like, you know, if we, we have receivers out there right now wearing 88, and Mike Irvin's in the Hall of Fame with that number. You know, Dallas does a big deal, and you can still make a big deal out of it without actually retiring, which is kind of right. what I'm saying. Right. I can dig it. I can dig it. Well, right, yo, we're going to go ahead and move on real quick to one more segment on Like It, Love It, Hate It. And Dave, I'm going to start with you. This is a little bit more uh, fan wishy. <laughs> there was a trade that has been somewhat mentioned, uh, uh, getting Deshaun Watson out of Houston. And there's a potential <laughs> three-team trade that would send Deshaun Watson to Miami and send Tua to Washington. You like it, love it, or hate it, Dave? Ah, man, that's tough to say. I mean, Tua's doing all right down there in Miami, but just look at how many quarterbacks have done well that have come to Washington and broke their leg. You know, it's tough to say, oh, let's get this great quarterback and bring him here and and, and let's let's finally do something with our offense. Um, but I know that we've, we've been talking about doing something with Deshaun Watson over the last couple of years. Uh, I mean, we've got to do something for sure to get this team going. I'm not saying anything new or groundbreaking here. Uh, it just feels like we're rearranging the decks on the, on or the chairs on the deck of the Titanic at this point. Yeah. You know, at, at the end of the day, we all know what the problem is, and he's not on the field. Right, right, right. Well, what you got? So I love part of this, and I hate some of it. I love the part of Watson going to Miami because I am – really scared that he's going to go to Philadelphia. Mm. If I saw correctly, I think Philly has three first round picks next year. Mm. I know they at least have two. And I can they've got the ammo to send him to to Houston to get someone like Deshaun. And I don't want Deshaun in Philly. I don't want to have to to play him twice a year. I'm not not having this. I don't love the return of Tua. 
Um, hmm. I was kind of skeptical about him coming out of college, but I'm skeptical of all college quarterbacks these days. I don't know what's going to make it and what's not. My concern was this reminds me of Wayne Haskins 2.0. You've got a coaching staff in Miami that did not want to. That was not the guy they wanted to draft. And the owner came in and said, nope, we're drafting him. We did that with Wayne Haskins. And if you're willing to get rid of the guy in the second year and he's been hurt at times and you're willing to say, hey, that we know this guy can be better and, and Houston doesn't want him back in return, that's to me, that's just that's buyer beware. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm nervous. If we got to a, I don't know if I'd be all in on this one. I, I kind of feel like we're not. It's it, Philosophically, it makes sense. I just don't know if he's who we want. Right. And what you think, man? I hate it um, because they're dragging our name in this, and I don't know why they can uh, create a deal between the two themselves. I think Miami has, what, two draft, two first-rounders next year uh, themselves. Um, and you, I think you're right. Philly has three, <clears throat> two in the top ten, actually. So – there, there. That that is more attractive to uh, get Deshaun Watson. Um, I think they're happy with Hurts, though. Uh, I, I don't think I think they'll um, be willing to go at least another year with Hurts. Hurts seems to be able to get the job done. The problem in Philly is not Hurts; it's everyone else, mm -hmm. and that's so something that they need to figure out. Hurts can put up numbers. Um, he's pretty much top 10 in fantasy right now. So, um, but I hate that they dragged us into this. Um, I, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind Tua because I think Tua is a step, is a step up or two, uh, from Heineke and, um, he can actually do the little things that need to be done that a quarterback in this league should be doing. Um, and, but I think I like your point, Will, if they're not talking about switching quarterbacks when, uh, Houston is in dire need of a quarterback, then what are we, uh, then what's the issue there? Why is there a question mark over Tua? Mm -hmm. And that's just something you need to think about right there. But. I don't think this trade will ever happen. There's, it's mm -hmm. rarely that um, three teams are involved in the trade in trades in the NFL. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. I hate it, Ab. Uh, I hate all trades like this because all they do is they just hype up these crazy fans that are like, oh yeah, if we do this and then they do that and this third team and that. No, nah, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. And honestly, like yo, Tua. I mean, I've I've seen him. I, I loved him in college. Um, I love him in the pros, but in both places, he had injury issues. He suffered from that in the beginning of this year. Um, the last thing we need is a quarterback that has injury issues. Uh, we've been dealing with that. So I, I like his play, but at this time, at this particular point, man, I'm like, look, let's just, let's hold out. Let's hold out to the end of the year and really put in some time in the off season or in the draft. Sam Howell, North Carolina. Second round. <laughs> hey, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let him sit behind Fitz for another year if that would do it, and he'll do it. I believe, baby. I believe. But no, but I, I agree. I, I look. I don't. I don't want to. A, I don't. This whole three team trade to me is just. It's crazy. I'm not. I'm not even into it. But I. I don't. I, Tua. I. I think we can go. We can pass on that. I honestly think we can pass on that at right now. Um, yo, Dave. Gotta gotta shout you out. I appreciate you coming on here and rapping with us for a little bit, man. Definitely, definitely want to bring you on uh, some more times. Let you talk about this team that we all love, man. I love it, man. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a pleasure. I'd love to come back. Yes, sir. Sure. And thank you. Appreciate all right, bud. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do have a game this week, ladies and gentlemen. We.